Our next paper is from Robin Francois and Rebecca Rochat of the Cinématique Suisse, Switzerland. Uh, this paper is presented by Robin, uh, who currently works there as a digital archivist. Robin holds a master's degree in computer science from the National Polytechnic Institute of Toulouse, and he has an IT security background, um, but started to develop his digital preservation interests in 2017 through volunteering um, at the Musée Boulot, the Swiss Museum of Computer Science. Robin's part of the technical committee of the Arrow Data Preservation Suite, which is an open source project for data storage media dumping. And he's going to present for us a short practice-based paper um, on a digital preservation pipeline for data storage media at the Cinematique Suisse. Robin. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizers and the reviewers of the IPRESS 2022 conference for accepting our paper and inviting us to uh, present our work today. This is uh, a joint work with Rebecca Rocha, uh, who is uh, head of digital heritage at Cinematheque Suisse, which is the Swiss National Film Archive based in Lausanne. Today, I'm going to present about uh, data preservation, media, media preservation, uh, more specifically data storage media, and how we've been inspired by the video game community uh, preservation, video game preservation community and uh, the tools that we have selected for our pipeline uh, that comes from those communities. Um, when I joined uh, Cinematech in 2020, uh, I remember inheriting a stash of media that was extracted from the collections. And uh, one of the media uh, is this media on the picture. Uh, uh, it's a uh, a media containing promotional material for the Fellowship of the Ring uh, feature film uh, directed by Peter Jackson and released in 2001. And as you can see, um, someone analyzed the media and considered it was unreadable. Um, I'm not very sure what was the method, what was the tool, so that was something uh, that indicated that we had a larger issue in the institution. Um, uh, we had a larger problem. It was obviously we lacked processes and tools and we had to do something. Um, and this CD also uh, reminded me uh, how uh, a CD is just like a box of an accession stuff. We, you don't know what's inside. Uh, you might have some metadata, uh, but uh, you would like to just open the box and know what's inside to start uh, uh, accessioning it. But uh, with a CD, you need a computer, you need a drive, you might need tools, uh, you might need spe specific uh, uh, tools that you don't have on one machine or the other. So um, obviously, it's a bit more complicated than just like a box. And even if you can access the files, then you will have issues with formats, and you cannot actually read the content of the, of the files. And, and that's an issue because my colleagues, uh, archivists, documentalists, they know everything about uh, cinema history and they know everything about our collections but they need files that they can read. If I just provide them with the CD uh, they will ask me well you need to do something for you need to, to do something for us as a digital archivist so we need to bring readable files and metadata to them to perform their work and uh, for that we lacked processes and tools uh, and we obviously couldn't rely on the helpful but very busy IT department that was in charge of those media before, and we couldn't rely on processes designed on the back of an envelope uh, or not designed at all. So this was almost a greenfield project in the institution. Uh, it's not very often that you have a, this kind of project that is new in our institution in 2020, but that was the situation. But this is not new to the, to the archiving community or the GLAM community, and the GLAM community has been handling my, uh, media migration and media uh, um, preservation for 20 or 30 years. So um, we decided that we should start looking at what other people were doing. And because it was a new project, uh, we had a great liberty to design and decide what tools we wanted and how we wanted uh, our processes to be. Uh, one of the aspects that was important in our design was that we wanted as much automation as possible, obviously, and we wanted to have very separate tasks so that we could have different kind of people with different skill sets being uh, um, 
doing the task separately. Uh, in parallel, as, uh, as it was said, in parallel to my activities at the Cinematheque, uh, I have been volunteering uh, the past five years in uh, the preservation of video game, uh, mostly for Switzerland, but uh, through my activities, I have been in contact with some of the groups you can see uh, on this slide. Uh, most of those groups have no resources. They are mostly hobbyists and volunteers uh, working on trying to tackle the huge issue, which is preserving video games. Um, data storage media is at the center of their collections and their issue. And uh, they have unusual and complicated situation, copy protected, uh, proprietary media, which you can only read on one platform. And uh, they have been developing their own tools because they couldn't find tools that, they were, that, that suited their, their needs. And so, um, we thought that maybe we, should, we could learn some lessons from those communities uh, about media preservation. But before going into the tools that we, we learned from them, uh, we had to define our pipeline. So this is a high level view of our six step uh, pipeline. Um, it was inspired by existing pipeline and also it was adapted to our needs, internal processes, and uh, tools, because we will discuss some of the tools, but the tools for, for other steps are uh, internal and, and, and not community-based. Uh, um, I don't think we are really innovating when we have designed this, this pipeline, so if you want more details, I won't get into the details today, so if you want more details, you can go and read the paper. And this is obviously still being developed and investigated, and we will hope that we can come with more uh, concrete results in the coming years about uh, this pipeline. So for the remainder of the presentation, I will be focusing on the tools that uh, we have been using and selecting for the step three, which is imaging or dumping uh, a media, uh, which is, uh, we will be talking about Aru, Pauline, and HXC and for the step four, which is extracting the files from an image. So the first tool and almost a discovery was ARU, which is uh, a, a tool that was uh, developed by those communities, by the video game preservation communities. Uh, the, the development started in 2011, uh, initially only for image comparison and conversion, and also file system identification. Uh, since then, it has developed more functionalities. Uh, media dumping has been added and uh, file extractions from file systems. Um, those communities couldn't use existing tools such, such as Guy Major, Isobuster, of, or Encase because it was not suited to their needs and or it was not open source and that was an issue for those communities which are hobbyists and they have also a sense of uh, importance of open source. Um, ARU uh, can dub to diff different kind of form image format, but it has also its own image format uh, that was designed to be able to uh, capture as much information as possible and to adapt to as much as, as, as uh, diverse uh, media. So the, the same image format can be used for floppies, uh, CD-ROMs, uh, zip disk, for example. And uh, because ARU is a, is a central par part of uh, the, um, is a central part of uh, our pipeline. Uh, I, uh, the Cinematic allowed me to become part of the technical committee of the project. For floppy disk, it's a bit more tricky. Uh, Aru can dump, dump floppy disk from a, a, a floppy drive, but uh, not to uh, a, a level that we wanted. So we, we went for... Uh, um, the Pauline project, so the Pauline project is a, a hardware project, which is a small standalone solution that's connected to a floppy drive, and then can, through the network, you can control uh, the, the hardware and you can ask for a, a, a dump of the floppy disk to be performed. It's very similar to Cryoflux, so it will do a signal level image, and the signal level image uh, is uh, something you might want to have because you have much more information and you will do the post-processing afterwards in software instead of relying on the post-processing that could be done by 
some drives or controllers, and because it's embedded and you have no control, uh, obviously uh, you, it's, it's opaque and you, you have no visibility on what's the post-processing. So, and f as when you have done the image uh, with Pauline, then we can use the tool, a tool that's been designed to do the post-processing of the image, which is called HXC. Uh, since 2006, this software has been developed to do the post-processing, manipulation, and image analysis of floppy disk uh, images uh, at, that were made at the signal level. Uh, so what we do in our, uh, uh, our workflow and uh, uh, pipeline is that we do images with Pauline, we uh, uh, post-process the images with HXC, and then if the, the image are uh, adequate, then we export to raw level, and then we can use other tools such as ARU to do the file extraction. On the picture, uh, on the right, you can see a floppy uh, disk from the collection that has been imaged with Pauline, and then we open the, the files with HXC, and uh, the picture on the, on the left is a visualization of the result. Uh, green is good, uh, red is bad. Uh, well, I'm not sure we can really extract any files or, or any information from that floppy anymore, and it's pretty damaged, so yeah, probably beyond repair, even if we insist. Um, obviously, obstacles remain. Um, our pipeline is still being developed and tested. We still don't have a full perspective on the, how it will work and scale when we start to uh, automatize our, our uh, workflow. Uh, some of the tools are still being developed outside the tools for imaging and, 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 and dumping, obviously for ingest and, and preservation and, and for other, other, other steps. We still are developing those tools and those are internal tools uh, that are being developed. Um, automation and quality control have not been yet really explored. It's too, it's too soon at the moment. Um, ARU is a, is a promising uh, software, but he has a limitation at the moment. One of the most uh, uh, important limitation is the, that HFS and HFS plus file system are not supported yet. Um, but there's a upcoming uh, version release 6.0 that will probably uh, solve some of the shortcomings. Um, we have briefly presented to you how we were inspired by the video game and community story preservation community when we started our project on media preservation. Um, in conclusion, we would like to point out that these communities are very creative and very productive, um, but usually made of hobbyists and volunteers that feel a bit isolated in their own community. Uh, they will most certainly benefit from our point of view and our practices and experience. So we invite everyone to get inspired by those communities and collaborate so that we might form a fellowship of media preservationists. <laughs> I have still slides, but, I've, but Liz is pointing me. So if there's any, no questions, I will get the, the extra slides. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one of your questions is what's on the slides afterwards. <laughs> okay. OK, round of applause, please, for Robin. Before we have <laughs> Thank you very much, Robin. It's great to hear about another initiative that's looking at data capture. Data capture is, for many of us, the start of our preservation efforts, and we really can't underestimate how important it is to get some insight into that. I mean, you mentioned in your paper, Robin, that um, I think you had about 5,000 disks that you'd identified yeah. to start with, and, and you expected to probably find that again. Um, do you have any idea, roughly, how far through you are with the, with the initial collection? You mean how much we have processed? We have processed, I think, we have not started to automate, so I think we've processed like 100, 200 media okay. to test the pipeline and to test the processes and to test the tools. So we tested the tools and now the next step and the, the step probably as soon as we get back from here will be to think about automation and see how ARU can be included in automation, existing automation processes because 
usually automation, if you take one of the hardware on the, like on the market, they will come with their own tool. So we have to test uh, if that hardware can work with Haru, uh, which is something we, we think it will, it, it's possible. We need to find if the API are working and if any adapt, uh, any, if Aru needs to be adapted to, to work with this kind of like automated um, CD reader or something like that. So still interesting challenges and times yeah, ahead. Exactly, yeah. Very good. Um, I think we've got time for one question. Um, would anybody in the room? See, we have Leo in the front here. <laughs> well, I've got a gazillion questions, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. Um, I mean, automation, I was wondering what, how you can automate some of the processes for floppy disk drives. I mean, CD-ROMs are much easier because you can always get a carousel. Um, but that's for another time. What I was more interested in asking is whether or why not uh, consider some of the um, digital forensics tools that are available out there and they can be really good at some of these functions. Well, we, we looked at the, tool, the existing tools and we, we evaluated that ARU was the, both the most promising and the most effective at the cur currently. And also ARU, which is very interesting, has been designed for video game preservation at heart, but has been made for basically archiving at heart. So they really look into implementing even like historical, for example, historical file systems, which is not something you probably will have on, on, on digital forensics tools that are more targeted to obviously what's currently being used. So we thought that it will be, and I think most of the forensic tools are usually, well, the most effective ones are not open source and are commercial products, and the, the other ones are usually a bit limited. Let's, let's chat about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, very good question. I think there is a lot of note swapping uh, that, that could potentially be done. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, if there's any other questions, there should hopefully be some time at the end. Can we just have one more round of applause, please, for Robin?